to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Blake's Gold. It's a golden Belgian ale. Today we're going to do something a little different, and we're not going to do a movie per se, but we're going to cover 1999's Curse of the Blair Witch. Curse of the Blair Witch was a made-for-TV fake documentary about the Blair Witch and about the town of Blair in Burkittsville sent out to TV stations to promote the movie before it came out. Whoever made this watched their Unsolved Mysteries. They watched their In Search Of. They knew (laughs) how to make a fucking documentary that looked legit and scary. Black and white footage panning through the woods in this creepy voice. They say the Blair Witch was Ellie Kedward and she was banished. You're banished! (laughs) In the winter and was supposed to have frozen to death. The next year, all of her accusers and half of the town's children had gone missing. It takes us right to footage of the students, family, and friends telling you about them Mm -hmm. and telling you about how they came up with the idea to make this little project, the Blair Witch Project. Very convincing. And then it cuts to news footage saying that three students have gone missing in the woods who are making this Blair Witch documentary. Then it takes us back in time. It shows historians start talking about the history of Burkittsville, which is formerly known as Blair. (laughs) The town is created to defend the Western approaches to Baltimore. There's a historian that says, yeah, there was a lot of witch trials happening at the time. There was the Bell Witch in Tennessee. He says there was also the Blair Witch. And they show actual shit manifests of... Ellie Kedward coming from Ireland into Blair. Apparently Ellie was accused of of bloodletting some children, probably just because she thought they were sick and she was accused of witchcraft. So the town went and rounded her up and banished her. You're banished! (laughs) To the the black hole! You (laughs) grow old and still! They banished her to the woods in the winter time. And some say, well, she was banished and they just left her out to the cold. Yeah. Some say they took her out and tied her to a tree. And that all happened in 1785. It fast forwards to 1825 and there's a railroad being built. The railroad kind of came close to the old town of Blair. And one of the guys who was in the party that found the town was named Burkett. So they called it Burkittsville. The town was resettled. There was a little girl playing in Tappy East Creek. And the creek was only like a foot deep. It was like a child could wade across. It was so shallow. There's eyewitness of a ghostly white hand coming up through the water and grabbing this child and pulling her down and underneath the rocks. No one found the body in a, in a stream that shallow. He yeah. <laughs> told me the stream was shallow. The creek turned all oily and... You couldn't drink from it, and there's stick figures floating in it. It fast forwards again to 1886. There's another story of a child met a woman in the woods. She was floating and took her back to her house in the woods and took her all the way into the basement and just left her there and told her that she'll be back. They say after a number of hours, the child got scared, which... After hours? Uh, hours after maybe <laughs> two minutes? Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Yeah. Or even before that, you yeah. see somebody floating. It's yeah. like, ah, I'm out of here. I'm not going to the basement in the first <laughs> damn place. You floating bitch. <laughs> <laughs> While the child was in the house, a search party from Burkittsville was sent out. What ended up happening was the first search party ended up just going missing. So they had to send out a second search party to go look for that first one, and the girl, I guess. The second search party stumbled upon the first search party at Coffin Rock, or as one of the old historians, Coffin Hill. Yeah. Coffin Rock. I kind of like that, how there's, you know... Two different names for it, depending (laughs) who you talk to. Yeah, it's neat. They were all bound together. They, They were all disemboweled. And they all had, like, weird symbols carved into their faces. Where they were bound, you could see marks, and so they were still alive Mm -hmm. while all that stuff was going on. Something surfaces again in 1940. This bum, I guess, this Mm -hmm. hermit guy uh, named Rustin Parr. The story goes with him is that he ended up leading a lot of children. He lured them 
into his basement with candy. He heard voices of, yeah. of a woman in his in his ear telling him to do this. And he ended up killing these kids one by one. And you always make the one kid stand in the corner of the basement facing the wall. That's right. Because well, he killed the other kid. Because he couldn't stand the eyes yeah. on him. It fast forwards again to 1994 where they actually find all of this lost footage from the three students that went missing in the Black Hills area searching for the Blair Witch. It was found sort of in the foundations of an old house. A lot of the people in the in the documentary are, are sort of theorizing that they're like, well, how could this have been? Yeah. It's almost as if the footage has materialized, which is not possible. Yeah. That's kind of like where the documentary ends and they say now the movie is coming out that is the footage we found. Perfect. It's the perfect setup because it makes you want to see this footage. The main reason we're talking about Curse of the Blair Witch is because nobody talks about it. A special piece in horror history where it was a made-for-TV fake documentary made to promote the movie. Yeah. And it's kind of neat where they put so much time and effort into this to really build the history of the Blair Witch. Like, they went into huge detail. Also a very believable documentary. Mm -hmm. You look at it now, we just kind of rewatched it. It's and so good. It stands up like it looks legit. It looks like a real documentary that was a made for TV, A and E style documentary. The fake illustrations of the Blair Witch. Arms spread it's out. It's fucking frightening. Yeah. And it looks like an old drawing, you know? There's some people that tell a story one way, and then it shows another guy who tells it a little different. Lends credence to the fact that it's real. Yeah. Right? Like the fact that there's not just one way that the story's told. Yeah. They always have two sides of the story as well, right? Yeah. One person believes it, one person doesn't. There's a skeptic in the, the yeah. too, yeah. Yeah. And so you're like, okay, well... It makes it seem more like a real documentary, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah, because you start to question it. Even the names, Black Rock Road is where they found the... The car. The Black Hills is where they went missing. Coffin Rock. <laughs> yeah, like, even Burkittsville, or Blair, the town of Blair. Sounds, Sounds kind of scary. Yeah, it's a little eerie. And all the news footage that they use in this. The footage of Rustin Parr in, in 1940. And his mug shots and everything. Yeah, and he, he looks weird. He looks like a weird, creepy hermit, and... The news footage looks like it's from 1940. Yeah. Like, this doesn't look fake. You fast forward to the present day with the news footage of the children gone missing, and there's a search out for them. Yeah. We all believe that. Yeah, totally. Because like, it looked fucking real. It looked real. looked legit. And it was scary. You get all these little subtle things in the movie which you would never get without watching this documentary. It makes the movie more real. Oh, for like, sure. Like, yeah. everything, everything in the movie is real because of this documentary. Yeah. And because of this fake documentary. I remember watching this documentary for the first time. I remember where it was. I remember it was in my dad's place in that big green chair <laughs> in front of the TV. And this documentary came on. And holy fuck, did it scare the living shit out of me. Yeah. I could not sleep that night. As scared as I was, I still wanted to see the movie. Yeah. And that is exactly why they made this documentary. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I also remember the commercials for this. Them showing the news footage of the search parties and yeah. stuff like that. But these kids, people have gone missing. It's like, what's this all about? And then the fucking documentary came out. And it's like, holy shit, you have to watch this now because yeah. then you're going to learn. And I fucking taped it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I actually taped it. And I cut the commercials out and everything, like super meticulous. Yeah. <laughs> it's a moment in history that I don't think we'll ever be able to mimic or ever get back. If you've never seen Curse of the Blair Witch, if you've only ever seen The Blair Witch Project, we urge you to watch Curse of the Blair Witch and then watch The Blair Witch Project. Yeah. And you'll appreciate 
I think, the Blair Witch Project even more. So, till the next time, keep drinking. <laughs>